Hi, I'm John Zarabelle. Um, I'm a curator and critic. Uh, it is April 14th, uh, 2017, and I'm here in, in Patricia Sweetoff's gallery to talk about um, a series of exhibitions she's got up right now. Um, the first one is with Adia Millet, um, a black artist who is um, got very hot and famous in the early aughts. This is a recent exhibition she's done of some house paintings. Um, a series of works, there's 72 in all, um, each of them six by six inches, and then this one, which is the, uh, I guess the, the house paintings are guest houses, so this must be the main house. Um, it's untitled, so we'll never know. <laughs> um, so the guest house paintings, um, each of them represents a different state of mind. This is inspired apparently by a poem uh, by the uh, Persian Sufi poet Rumi from the 13th century. Rumi is an um, incredible poet. If you don't know, you should you should look him up. But this is um, this is really fantastic, uh, a way of thinking about. Well, let me start that again. Um, this series is a way of thinking about different states of mind and the way in which we as humans. Um, uh, are housing these different states, right? And, and each of those states is in some ways part of us. So what we see if we look at the series of paintings is a kind of, you know, a typical uh, flat lateral version of a house, you know, with a triangle on top of a square and a door in the middle. Um, and each one is different, but, but, but it's not the house, right? The house is the self. The self has these states of mind, and those states of mind are variously represented in a series of six by six inch paintings. It's really interesting to come in and see the incredible variety that this artist is able to bring to a six inch, six by six inch painting of a house. Right? There's a, an enormous number of approaches and ways of looking at that. And obviously, as a human being, I can relate to the idea that there are an enormous number of ways that I might feel about myself or about the world at any given time. So I'm really fascinated by the way in which she fluctuates the way in which is always constantly shifting. And of course, like anybody, I have my favorites, right? And so what are your favorites? What, what draws you to something? What makes you interested in an object? It's a way of reading tea leaves almost, because each of these has a particular state of mind. One of them, like this, loss, is an image that struck me as so powerful and so rich. I love the way she treats the material, the kind of uh, abradedness of the white paint, which seems to be fading or breaking up, um, leaving it a sort of gray into a gray field. And then this red trace of the house here, just a trace hovering above it, right? You really start to uh, see an incredible sort of visceral conversation in paint. And then I look up the title and I say, Lost. And I say, Yes, that's it. I get it. It's lost, right? That sense of it all just sort of fading away. In this picture, um, it's very different, right? The, the house is very clearly delineated, and it, it also has that distressed look with the sort of the lighter gray paint sort of um, revealing the sort of black paint underneath, like old wood, a barn or something like that. And then around that is this sort of starry red sky, obviously made by the artist flicking paint um, onto the, the surface of the canvas. These are little dots of paint, but it turns out to be like a big starry sky. This picture is discernment. Right? Interesting to think about discernment as a state of mind. And yet, obviously, if you're meditating, discernment becomes one of the most important and revelatory practices, not something we think about perhaps very much in our day-to-day -day lives. So, integrity, right? This painting, I liked it when I first saw it. I didn't know what it was about. And, and what I liked about it is that the, you can see that there's a surface, there's a wall, it's a variation, right? All of these are variations on the same theme. But here you can see like a surface wall, of white plaster on the outside, but on the bottom it's peeled away and you can see these layers of structure underneath it, right? And if the guest house is really a, a version of the self, then we're thinking about ourselves not as just sort of trees blowing in the wind, but that we actually have structure. We have roots that tie us to the ground. We have things that help us be who we are, right? Then you think, oh, integrity. That's, that's the structure. That's the, the thing. And we think of integrity as, you know, telling the truth or, you know, showing up on time or something like that. But, but actually, it's a, it's a way of sort of self-understanding that helps you to be stable and solid. Um, even with these beautiful colors.
what's going on in the sky and the world is changing and switching and, and, and shifting all around you, but the integrity is there. All right, so Western Tiberia's show is fascinating multimedia um, work. Uh, he makes these incredible sculptures. Um, they, this looks like a hammer, for example, but it's made out of paper. Uh, it looks like it has nails made in, nailed into it. Those are also made out of paper. The, the thing is, is, he's constructing a kind of fetish object here. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a sledgehammer. It's uh, entwined with these different elements um, uh, that they seem to be uh, combined together. Um, there's like a, a little pouch. Um, he's also made that, right? But it, it seems to hold some sort of secret element. Um, and then here, another pouch that uh, has folded up um, elements. And all of these things have an individual meaning. And the fun for the viewer is to try to decode some of those meanings. How much can you get out of it, right? The fly swatter um, uh, has some metallic uh, reflective quality in the grid of the fly swatter itself, right? And it, it took me a long time looking at it, but I finally realized that it says strike. Right? Strike, strike like strike the fly, or strike like let's go on strike. Um, there's multiple meanings here, right? And he's playing with those meanings and, and teasing them out with each one of the objects. Um, this piece is particularly noteworthy. Let's see. Let's break here where I take a look and see what it's called. This piece. <laughs> All right, so the thing about this work is that it's all got really incredibly long and complicated titles that help you to uh, get into the piece to a certain degree, but also are very difficult to remember, right? So um, I'm just going to pull this out and say, this piece is called Things We Should Have Taught You Before the Ascent Forward Back One, right? Um, and this is a piece of tar infused paper, which obviously makes a black flag. Black flag makes us think of anarchy, right? But it also has various other elements, and specifically, these are um, uh, images that are embedded in uh, the paper itself, right? There's sort of a, uh, a, a poster or print on it, right? Um, but uh, yellow peril supports black power. So black is, of course, also black power. Bringing the yellow peril into it um, comments on Asian identity. Asian roots, right? Um, and even the uh, woven uh, braids here, which look like um, hair weaves, right? Um, uh, this is an interesting, you know, once again, another interesting cultural example because, of course, hair weaves are primarily for, you know, used by black people in the United States, but they often come from Asian countries. Um, India, India, the Philippines, places like that is where people sell their hair to make it into real weave. So those kind of cultural elements are woven, tied in, literally. Um, uh, this is paper that the artist has formed with his mouth while reading. Uh, it, these are there's levels of complexity here that are, that are hard to untangle, right? But some of the fun is, of course, trying to figure out how all these pieces fit together. On one hand, it's this beautiful object, but it's so conceptually rich, so complex, that we could um, uh, peel the meaning apart for, for some time. Okay, so this piece is Things I Gather, and um, obviously it's made in the shape of a rake. Once again, he's making all these works with paper, so even though it looks like it's made out of wood sp spokes, it's actually paper turned into wood. Um, string that's made of paper, and, and all of it um, incredibly carefully handcrafted. The, the, the question of, of the rake is like, you know, when you're raking the lawn, you pick up whatever is there, right? And that's in some sense a kind of personal statement about the things he gathers, right? What does, what does he pick up? And there's this sort of Chinese decoration here on the top. Um, these uh, objects, the red ones, are whistle and serving as a kind of shelf. Um, these are actually protest posters that are uh, folded around themselves, right? So there's a kind of political message, but it's buried. It, it's illegible. Um, we can't see it. We know that there's some political message there, but, but it's beyond our, our grasp, right? On top of those posters sits this um, piece of ginger, right? He's constructed a piece of ginger, um, and the ginger itself is sprouting, right? So the green little sprouts that come out of it. The, the, the references, of course, um, uh, primarily the Chinese culture here are um, uh, ways of, I think, 
reflecting on um, how, you know, as a person, as an artist, one encounters and gathers up elements that, that become um, sources of inspiration or strength or, or important personal items that um, we carry around with us. So it reflects for me, even though it's a simple work, it really reflects deeply about a lot of the most um, intimate and important things that, that we have in our lives. So this is the third show. Um, the artist Frederick Hayes, uh, formerly of San Francisco, now living in New York. And Frederick does uh, basically two kinds of works. He does cityscapes and he does portraits. Um, and the show features both. Um, there are the big cityscape uh, images that he's done. These are works on paper, um, charcoal, and, and maybe um, pencil. I'm not totally sure. Um, but these are these are works that um, represent domains, worlds, really. And um, part of uh, partly this is a world we live in, and partly this is a world that is kind of a fantasy, um, an ideal city or a place that. Um, perhaps the artist would like to see. Um, in, in other words, it bridges the gap between the real and the imaginative, right? The portraits um, seem to me very real, really vivid. Um, there's a way in which they do look like, um, you know, artists that I'm familiar with, people like Max Beckman or David Park. Artists are really interested in the sort of the, the, the range of figurative motifs so that you can um, basically make an abstract painting, which is also a figurative painting, right? Um, and so all of these paintings are just so full of paint and color and richness and complexity. But I think it's really important to say that all of the figures here are black, right? Um, and, and Frederick is making um, black subjects in his art. This is a, a topic that you know other artists like Carrie James Marshall have been particularly important to them, right? But the, the idea, Hindu Wiley even, right? But the idea of um, creating these small and extremely rich portraits, not of you know, famous people like Hindu Wiley, but, but actually just folks, right? Um, these, are, uh, these are all people that um, uh, you know, you've seen on the street, right? Um, and at each one, he's, he's lavished this incredible detail, this rich painting style on these figures so that they come to life on these really small surfaces. These are 11 by, 30, by 14 inch paintings, right? There's so little surface area and he's done so much with each one. It just makes it so vivid. Also, there's a kind of emotional complexity here, right? Um, this woman is looking up, this woman with the sunglasses, the man who's looking straight at you. Each of them embodies not only a different kind of character or type, but actually a real um, emotional presence, right? And, and, and the best body of portraiture really connects the viewer to someone we've never encountered.